Hi guys. So, um, I don't know if you guys saw, but I redid my channel description a few days ago, and because I kind of not changing direction, but kind of adding in some important stuff I wanted to do. So it's come time for one of those videos. Uh, I've touched on this. I've had a couple videos about it before. But in case you don't know, I have a condition called cerebral palsy. And it's, um, yeah, it's a disability. And it affects different things for different people. I have a minor case of it, but it still affects me. So I changed kind of, sort of, not really, but I'm kind of just trying to inform and teach and maybe people will understand me better if I make these videos. I mean, it's been suggested to me before by family, friends, acquaintances, people who know I have this condition. And, um, so, yeah, this is one of those videos. Today, I want to talk about, um, habits and coping mechanisms and more of how I'm different from my peers. So, so, if you met me in real life, um... I would come off as quiet and then you would say one sentence that piqued my interest and you would not get me to shut up about it. I talk a lot. And especially if habits or likes and interests are mentioned, I will tell you a story. That's one of my favorite things to do. I love to tell stories. But today, we're going to, um, talk about my coping mechanisms and my habits, like I said, so I'm trying not to go off on a tangent. <laughs> so let's start with one of my most recent and effective coping mechanisms, this here movie. See, if I get upset, like really pulling at my hair, anxiety level upset, which hasn't happened in a while, thank goodness, or Actually, that's a lie. It happened yesterday. Discard that last statement. Um, I usually end up watching this. I don't know why. It's just a movie that I go to to make myself feel better. It's a, it's a coping mechanism for when I'm at home. And right now, it's not in its case because I was watching it the other day. But um, another coping mechanism that... I have, let's see how to get them, hang on, is, when I was in school last year, um, I could usually be found with one of these. Usually, actually, a monster high doll. <laughs> and a brush in my purse. And a water bottle to spray the hair with. And if I got really worked up, I would yank them out of my purse faster than lightning and brush and brush and brush and brush till I felt better. That's what I would do. It's a coping mechanism that earned me a lot of, uh, um, stares and confused looks people in school if they didn't really know me they thought I was a uh, what's the word retarded and incompetent at processing what was actually going on around me and it's true I don't observe things very well because when like for example um when someone tells me to go grab something out of the fridge or the pantry, they'll say, okay, it's on the third shelf, right-hand side, it's behind whatever is in front of it. And, but I'm not incompetent. I, I'm aware. 
I'm here. I'm a thinking, living, breathing human being who has feelings that tend to get hurt by people who call me retarded and think of me that way. Like, I had classmates who, uh, I would color a lot because it was a, I went to occupational therapy for the longest time and she had me color and trace to work on my hand coordination. And so I would take a coloring book and a box of pencils to school and a sharpener and I would color whenever I got free time and people would look at me weird because I wasn't coloring the adult coloring books. I was coloring them. Um, I was coloring stuff like this. I was coloring legs. I was coloring ponies and, and Barbie and you know I have adult coloring books. I have like I brought my Supergirl coloring book and my Harley Quinn and the Suicide Squad coloring book but I only ever really got attention when I had something like Barbie or My Little Pony or uh, DC Superhero Girls because <laughs> they thought it was weird because apparently my my classmates are very small minded and they don't really think I guess but yeah so um like I don't have my phone on me and I can't splice a video in because my phone will be like low storage alert but my room right now if you looked at my bookshelf you would see um you would see dork diaries and Ever After High, and Descendants, and American Girl, and yeah, lots of American Girl, and Little House on the Prairie, and stuff like that. Stuff that kids my age don't typically read. Like, yes, I have books they probably would read. Like, um, I have a book about a spy who has to save this rich family from, um, what was it? A stalker, and it's called Always Watching. I have a novelization of God's Not Dead 2. I have books like Divergent, Divergent, and Princess Diaries, but the majority of my books are regarded as um, middle school literature. I don't know why. I read at a college level. It's just that some plot lines don't intrigue me. I like, um, fantastical stories like the ones in Ever After High. I don't know. It just kind of happens that way. But it irks me that people are so small-minded. Like, yes, I have an American Girl catalog in my backpack. Yes, I will talk to you endlessly about it. Yes, I do color My Little Pony. And yes, I do have a monster idol sticking out of my purse. Don't stare at me. Just because I'm in a um, special needs area does not mean I'm a retarded, incompetent fool like most people believe. And it, the other reason it irks me is that my um my school they have a they have a campaign that they do every year that was like I pledge never to say the R word. The R word being retarded, and those people will take the pledge and fast forward a month, and you can catch them saying it about someone behind their backs. It's just mean. And I know this video is probably not your go-to explanation for stuff, but this is just about me, so I hope it helped you gain some insight. And um, I guess I'll end it here, and I will see you guys next time.